Hi. Gay is not sin, and Jesus isn't asking the gay person to change and be straight. That's right. The Bible doesn't condemn gays, but the Bible does tell us some really interesting things, and I'd like to talk about that. You probably can see the title of this program is Proph Prophesy Against the Shepherds. Uh, we're living in some exciting times, and the Bible actually has been clear in, in saying when the very first moments that Jesus can actually return. Uh, so far, since even Paul, the church's theology is imminent return, which is a good thing because if Paul or anybody else knew in the first few centuries that it's going to be 2,000 years before Jesus returns, then you accept Jesus and you know that he's not coming in, during your lifetime, during lots of people's lifetimes for centuries. Jesus is just not coming. And the Bible tells you this, actually tells you this. And so in the meantime, the theology, it's a false theology of imminent return because Jesus isn't going to come at any moment, which is commonly preached. Uh, because if you go to uh, Hosea chapter 6, verse uh, 2, it'll tell you that after two days, he will revive us. And that's important. Revive doesn't mean revival. He'll revive us. And in the third day, he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Well, what does that sound like to you? It's, that sounds like rapture. So actually, in Hosea, it is telling you when Jesus is going to raise up the church to be with him forever. And he tells you what he's going to do. He's going to revive us. He's going to revive the people of God. And what does revive mean? Does revive mean revival so lots of people get saved well yeah lots of people will get saved but revive in this kind of a setting is actually meaning like if you see somebody that's heart stopped and he's not breathing you give him cpr you got to revive him and so you do cpr on him well this is what god is going to do because the church is basically falling away and going after false doctrines and and uh, abiding by traditions of men and customs of men. And this is just not the way the church is going, needs to be. Plus, you can go to church after church after church, and it's fairly comfortable. They help you learn things to live with each day of your life, you know. Don't get mad at other people do to others what you'd have them do to you and and uh, pray and worship God and so forth. But there's something missing out of that because in the last days, God gave us a warning of what's going to happen in the book Revelations and lots of different books in the Bible. He goes through this. And... <clears throat> It's not going to be a fun time. Before Jesus returns, at least half of the world population will be killed. I think, actually, that there will be 500 million to a billion people left over. So that means 6.5 billion people are likely to be killed before Jesus sets his foot on the Mount of Olives in Israel. And so the shepherds and pastors, they're not wanting to get into that i've just heard a pastor not long ago say he doesn't like to go to facebook anymore because when he goes to facebook he's attacked from every angle and here he sees or sees everybody gossiping and all that he just feels like doesn't like it he so he just doesn't go there pastor you're called to witness and if you don't show up then who's going to hear? They need to hear the message. And when people are criticizing you or not 
behaving properly online, well, that's a good opportunity to witness. It gives you an opportunity. Uh, that's what I liked when I was in, when there used to be all these chat, chat rooms. Remember, remember Yahoo had chat rooms, AOL had chat rooms, and, and I had a whole bunch of different messenger names. So I can go into Yahoo Messenger, their chat rooms, and, and have upwards to 10 chat rooms going at the same time. And in those days, there's 50 Christians in those chat rooms. And my name, Gaze for Jesus, is in there. So I don't even have to be there. I come back and I look at there and I see that everybody's going crazy trying to condemn gays and everything. So they have to, to deal with talking about gays just because my name is there. But the more they condemn, more or less, the more I liked it because that gave me opportunity to uh, explain what I've learned through scriptures that gay is not sin and Jesus is not asking the gay person to change and be straight. And so you shouldn't run from opportunity when it comes to you uh, and stares you in the face. And pastors, if you read Ezekiel 34, you can see that you have an awesome responsibility and it's <clears throat> you need to take care of your flock and take care of your flock is just not counseling them over their daily issues and and or tell them how to live and follow the precepts of god and do what god shows us to do which is really good to do but there's also a time coming where the church is going to be uh, for the slaughter. I mean, there's just no uncertain terms, uncertain terms that at some point before Jesus returns, it's not going to be a pretty sight here on earth. And Christians are going to have to be able to know that they could very well die. Now, there is a group of people that are getting audio Bibles to the world because it turns out there's like 7,140 languages in the world and, and over 4,000 of them do not have the written Bible. And even if they did, upwards to 75% of them can't read, so a written Bible wouldn't do any good in their language. So this organization is actually um, doing audio Bibles. And, and they've got like 1,240 of them uh, in, translated into audio. And they're hoping with a goal of getting the rest of the 7,140 translated by 2033. So it's really fantastic to, to see what's happening uh, with the audio Bible. The Bible tells us that the gospel will be preached in all the world. Well, there's a fact that exists today, right now. 2.8 billion people has never heard anything about Jesus Christ. So the gospel has not been preached in all the world, no matter. Since 1974, when I accepted Jesus, every place I went, oh, everything's ready. Imminent return. Jesus can come tonight. You better accept Jesus. And the, the prophecies is preached in all the world. And they, they assume because, well, they got satellite and so forth like that, that somehow or another, if you had a TV, you could probably get it. Uh, but in 7,140 languages, there's still a ways to go. And so there's a lot of prayer that can still be done uh, for the people that haven't even heard of Jesus yet. And it's the things aren't too good going around for years and years. I've looked into things that showed how close we are to um, practically annihilation here in the United States. And back in the uh, mid 70s, it was like you had about a 30 minute window or something. And then you're 
you could be toast and there's not much you can do about it. Well, technology has changed over the years, so prophecies are conspiracy theories or whatever that usually got some stuff you can prove to some degree. They're not all just crazies. But technology has changed, so so has these people that are looking into what's going to happen in the United States. And the most recent, what I'm here, is there, there's a system called Acquaint. It's an uh, artificial intelligent kind of thing that's going to be operated with drones. And the government is printing tens of thousands of them, just printing these drones out. Print it. It prints out. They send it off in the air to track basically Christians. And these things are happening. Then we got a new advancement in foreign powers. It used to be said there was at least three to four million foreign troops in the United States at any given time. And China was right on the out in the ocean off of Canada, ready to come in, bringing millions in through Canada through a deal that's already been made. And basically to come in and round up Christians and other people that might disagree with the, what's happening in the government. And is something like this happening? Well, today, there's no guessing. It's right on there on CNN News. You, you've seen there's a camp that's holding over 2,000 kids uh, down there on the Mexico border on our side where it was supposed to be built just for a month from June to July of this year. Well, they're still there and no hint of them trying to move anybody out. And in fact, it's growing, getting larger and more kids are being put in there and they have to be lined up to go to the chow hall, lined up to go to the showers and bathroom and stuff like that. And the, the tents are there. there. You don't have to guess about it. And then there's all kinds of ready to be made. Uh, it didn't take them very long to put those couple of thousand uh, uh, tents up. And you can, if, when you drive down the south side of SeaTac Airport, where Homeland Security uh, Prison is there, you can look at the other side of the runway, the south side, and you can see an area of land that is ready-made to and it is listed on the list of uh, FEMA camps and where they will be rounding up generally Christian to come out and to basically arrest you and take you to re-education camps. We can see how these kind of things work by looking what China's doing. China is actually publicly on their television uh, shown that they have a governmental camp where they've rounded up Muslims uh, in a very similar type of thing, what we would call FEMA camps, and to re-educate them. And they show video of them teaching these Muslim, the, whatever it is they're re-educating them to. And they're doing this because they're fear of the Muslim, and they're trying to figure out how they can control it before they turn violent. And so they've done what we did with the Japanese, round them all up and put them into camps. So they've round up Muslims in, in there in their FEMA-like camps. And in the United States, there's lots and lots and lots of these places. And they're ready to go. It doesn't take very long to throw up all these tents. And so they can get these barracks made real quickly. And things are going to be happening. And, and you pastors not getting you ready. You know, we have the book of Revelations for a reason, to warn us of the times that are coming. Revive? How is the church going to be revived? If, if the church is dead and needing CPR, then what's going to happen? Well, God's going to send his two witnesses, and they're going to forcibly revive the church. And the church isn't going to like how that happens because they're going to send plagues and everything. The two witnesses are not just going to wreak havoc on Antichrist. They're going to also come up to the shepherds and say, you know, you need to start feeding the sheep. 
and preparing them and not just making it just comfortable, a nice cozy place to go on Sunday and people can be blessed and everything. Wonderful, no doubt about it. The pastors are wonderful. They have an awesome responsibility. But one of those responsibilities is getting them ready for the Lord's return. Like I, I said earlier, Hosea uh, verse uh, chapter 6, verse 2 says that there'll be two days and the Bible explains what a day is. It's a thousand years. And so two days is a thousand years. So where does this thousand, where are these 2,000 years coming from? We like just to say, well, the year 2,000. Well, you can't do that. You see, Jesus, had, there's two significant parts of Jesus' life. He was born. That was a wonderful, fantastic miracle. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. But what was even more important was the purpose he came, and that was to pay the price for our sins, to die on the cross and raise from the dead and then ascend to the Father. I kind of are going along with the 2,000 years starts when Jesus died on the cross. So you have to know when Jesus was born. Well, we got the Gregorian calendar, which started with an error, and, and most kind of believe you got that Jesus was born in 4 to 6 BC. So if you're dealing with 4 to 6 BC and you go to Jesus died at 33 years old, then you so you, then you count out when is 2000 years and you come out with 2027 to 2029. So we still got about 10 years that we can make a difference and be getting ourselves ready and not sitting here every single day thinking, well, Jesus might come tonight. Now, anything's possible with God. Nothing's impossible for God. So he can come at any moment if that's his, he could do that. And he really wants us to keep this in mind that he can come at any moment. However, he told us that there's going to be two days, and those two days have to start with something this point of reference that we can know today, and that's Jesus' resurrection and ascension. And that two, 2,000, two days would be 2,000 years, brings it to 2027, 2029. Then we got this reviving period. And often I come on here and say the two witnesses are going to shake the church. Because the church is, for all practical purpose, in many ways dead. They're not really doing what they need to do. I mean, they could do something about $2.8 billion. A person that is uh, working on this, you can check him out, John Ackerman. Uh, he's uh, working really hard to get these Bibles and on uh, recorded so that they can go out to land. And when they send people out with these uh, audio Bibles, often they're not expected to return alive. They often go there and they're killed because they're going to places that never heard anything about Jesus and, and don't like strangers coming in and don't be able, can't read or anything. And, and these people are being killed. And, but they're going in there to these lands uh, and villages and having those people uh, make audio Bibles so that then they can then put that on these audio books, audio Bible things that they can dispense out through the land so that these people can hear the message of God and the, the wonderful things that are happening when they hear it I mean, whole villages are transformed. They could be extremely violent and will kill you. And then suddenly now they're just wonderful people of God and they're just wanting to get more and more of those audio Bibles so they can take out throughout the land. So the church could be participating on getting the gospel preached in all the world by getting the Bible translated into the 7,140 languages. Can you believe that? This many languages and 
only 4,000 of them has been translated into a written language, which doesn't do much good in an awful lot of countries uh, because they don't even, they can't even read. So we need to be thinking about getting ready. And pastors, you need to start taking upon your awesome responsibility of being a pastor and doing more than just making your place a comfy, cozy place. You need to speak the message that Jesus is going to be returning soon. And you got a head start on knowing because it's about 10 years away before something will start to begin because God isn't going to wait for anybody. He's going to start reviving people, giving CPR to the church, whether you like it or not. And it's not going to go well with pastors if somebody comes in and warns them and tells them they need to start doing something and they don't listen to that person or they reject that person, it could go hard with them. And there are people going out specifically to various pastors to speak face-to-face -face with them and give them a message. And God has given them a stern warning that if they don't heed this message, their life as they know it's going to change drastically. And so... Let's get ready. And to start getting ready is you need to know Jesus. So if you don't know Jesus right now, turn to him right now. It's a really simple prayer that you can get born again, as they say, and have your spirit revived by accepting what Jesus did. John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that who." Shall believe it, whosoever shall believe in him shall have everlasting life. So it's a simple belief that God gives us to believe that he sent Jesus and he was born a virgin. The word became flesh and dwelt among us and he lived without sin. And then he climbed up on that cross and died and shed his blood for our sin. We deserve to die for our sin, but he paid the price for us because if we died for our sins, it would be eternal death, no hope. So Jesus died for us. And then he rose from the dead, proving that he was worthy and he had victory over death. So by believing that Jesus is the Son of God and accepting what he did on the cross and ask him to forgive you. You are born again and you will live forever with Jesus. Now you need to get to know Jesus by reading the Bible. I suggest the King James Version Bible. Start with the book of John. That way you can find some really good things. It's, and then read the whole Bible. And Jesus also did something. He baptizes in the Holy Spirit where you have the initial evidence of speaking a language you didn't learn. So ask Jesus to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. You can read Acts chapter 2 to get a handle on what's it all about. The Holy Spirit can make intercessory prayer for you. Pray for things that if with your understanding you have difficulty in praying for. He can pray through the groans of your body that can't that you can't put into words. And there's some more that's involved here. When you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, he has the gifts of the Spirit. You can receive gifts of prophecy, the gifts of wisdom, gifts of teaching, gifts to be a shepherd, and gifts of healing, which none of these has ever passed away. And Jesus says that in the last days, there'll be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit and people will have these various gifts of the Spirit, which I said one is healing. So you could be healed right now. Jesus, if I, by his stripes, when he is whipped, those stripes was for your healing. So you can be healed. He already paid the price for your healing. So put your hand where you have that pain or sickness. Got it there? In the name of Jesus, be healed. Now tune in every week at the same time that you're watching now. Because I come on a few times a week and it'll be the same time that you're watching now if you're watching on TV. Or you can go to seattlecommunitymedia.org and they have the live presentation being aired there for whatever program that would be on. And I come generally Mondays at 7.30. And also at seattlemedia.org you can go to my on-demand program, seem 24-7. 
and go to my website at gazeforjesus.com. Press the donate button or the GoFundMe button. Give a little, give a lot. If you need help to, to go forth and preach this message. See you next time.